The United States has hit Russian entities with sanctions for the third time this month for allegedly backing North Korea against a tide of global pressure. Two shipping companies and six vessels are the latest to be affected, as the Treasury Department announced the sanctions target people involved in the banned ship-to-ship -ship transfer of refined petroleum products to North Korea flag vessels. So we ask ourselves, can US President Donald Trump keep what he described this week as a very good relationship? relationship with Chairman Kim Jong-un while still maintaining his hardline approach to sanctions. After all, Chairman Kim himself was directly quoted in the last few days condemning hostile forces for trying to stifle the Korean people through brigandish sanctions. But Washington continues to demonstrate its commitment to keep pressure on Pyongyang until it abandons its nuclear weapons and ballistic missile programs. What seems to be happening here is that President Trump and Chairman Kim are refraining from direct personal personal insults to hold some sort of semblance of a relationship while still pursuing conflicting goals. For the North, it seems to be gaining at least some support in the face of sanctions, as these Russian cases show. And President Trump himself has admitted he's also lost some of China's backing in pressuring Pyongyang. So one can see how declining US relations with those countries is helping North Korea. It doesn't seem to have to denuclearize, for example, as fast as Washington wants. Then there's is South Korea. Foreign Minister Kang Kyung hwa said yesterday at Seoul's National Assembly that the US is expected to impose additional sanctions on the North unless it takes substantive measures for denuclearization. But asked if the South Korean government agrees with the US that there's been no substantive denuclearization action by the North, Kang said, I think there can't be a complete unity of perception. That seems like a very cautious way of saying Seoul and Washington aren't on the same page. Kang also admitted there's still a gap between Seoul and Washington on the issue of defense cost sharing, with another round of negotiations taking place today. And Pyongyang may sense an opportunity to divide the Allies further in the coming weeks. At any rate, these elements show us a few more layers of complexity, with Pyongyang set to engage in plenty more vital meetings in the coming weeks, including by welcoming President Moon Jae-in of the South to the North Korean capital within September.